Do you feel like, um, I know you do some work with helping people share their art and the role that art kind of like plays in just helping to educate people and maybe introduce some of the different ideas around mental health. And I'm wondering if any parallels between kind of like growing up in a drama type creative setting and getting your start there and like your experiences with art now, do you see any like, uh, I don't know, direct or indirect lines there? Yeah, we put on plays because we haven't, we want to touch a certain part of the human um, ex experience. We want to play around with concepts and drama and, and, and moments in our life that, that really touch us. And then other people are excited to, to jump into those lives and portray them. And other people are excited to get into the audience and be a part of that story and clap and help it bring, you know, come to life. Sure. Um, you know, mental health, it's not like counting dollars in the bank or how many rocks are on your property. Like it's very hard to touch what, what does that mean? And, you know, someone suffering to one person might be grand compared to another, a small issue might be huge and just devastating to someone else. There's no way to really, you know, make this concrete. And so I found through art, people can really pull out some of their experiences and share them in a way that's less threatening to themselves, less threatening to others, and can start conversations. We, we only did it one year uh, when we were involved with the Mental Wellness Night with the, with the Sharks, the um, NHL team. I asked for people from all over the county to submit ideas of mental health wellness and mental health stigma through art. And it, the pieces that we got were amazing. Some in painting, some in flower um, our, our arrangements, some with crafts, some with different mediums. It, it, it really was. We had one on one side, one on the other side, and you could just see, you know, wellness and stigma and we're hoping people can kind of move that way. Uh, we have a program that we partner with. The, the, the county does it. It's called Photo Voice eight sessions they give the folks um you know if they don't have it they give them a um um um, um a um, um camera and they go through taking pictures that mean something to them they kind of mold that meaning around they work on poetry they work on how to express themselves they work on stigma and wellness and health and their symptoms and how it all comes through in their lives and then they produce these things in giant art shows. And when, when, when we saw this, we, we immediately got one of our staff um, certified to offer the class as well. And we took down our art from one of our clinics and just put up their art because it's, 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 it, some of this is really amazing. You're just seeing someone's pain, someone's wellness coming through. There was one that was of a tree and there was a, a wooden beam kind of holding up a limb that was hurting and there was a white X on it. And the person's poem was, this is me, I'm an, I'm an injured tree. And the, the board is what I need. And it kind of went through that, that, that symbol of that tree. There was another one of just a simple picture taken out of a window. And the window happened to have a clear pane of glass and like a frosted pane of glass and they sure. say you, know, you 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 see you you all see the world through this clear pane of glass i'm looking through a frosted pane of glass i don't really mm -hmm. understand the world i don't understand you all it takes me more time and you know it, all of these things that I, I can count off 25 of them of, of my favorites but these are folks who found their own way to express themselves that couldn't have done it before this program and so we love being a partner to, the, to, the, to, to that to that project Sure. Yeah, that's fascinating. I guess as you're saying that, that is what a lot or I don't know if it's safe to say most, but that's probably what art began with in general without you having to maybe label it as um, some type of mental health, uh, some type of positive mental health practice. But that's probably what it began with for m many, many people, whether you consider yourself an artist or not, was just trying to figure things out, figure yourself out in the world around you. So I'm interested in to know, based on that, um, something you mentioned that I read about, uh, I think it was a quote, it was just around other out-of-the-box pathways for helping people, you know, overcome, address mental health challenges, understand their psychology. Is there anything specific that comes to mind or that you had in mind when you mentioned that? Yeah, you know, it used to be uh, a lot of places where I work as well, you know, healing was four walls and a um, therapist 
maybe back in the day it was a couch. I've never done that kind, but you know, it's very much one model of what healing looked like. And that therapist was probably white, probably male, you know, and moving in one uh, way. And uh, we, we found that when we're working with folks who are really suffering, especially those who are, are, are really suffering and have less resources, you know, healing is going to look different. And healing needs to be something that makes sense to them. I, my favorite example was a, 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 a client who I've been working with for two years. You know, I thought there was some substance use going on. I thought it was like drinking or something, you know, something major, but I didn't. That's pretty much all I thought. And we got the chance to hire a wonderful peer specialist. So someone who's gotten certified in being a peer specialist with lived experience in mental health. And her first visit with him, she says, hey, I see you. I've been there. What are you really doing? <laughs> he admitted to a whole lot more than <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> right. And, and, and his, you know, it didn't change around his life, but the past, the arrow started to point upwards. And he found that he could um, work better in, in services. I, I, I really started to prescribe per peer services. And I was more like the backup ad, um, adjunct to what she was doing. And he didn't need therapy. He needed, he needed to see himself in, in, a, in a peer who had made it. Mm. And his family needed to see himself in a peer who had made it. And to kind of bring back the family into one more unit and to have hope again. You know, I came back in the picture more strongly weekly, maybe a year later, you know, but that that's what he needed. I'm wondering if that kind of speaks to like if you're talking about how do you how do you kind of address any stigma around uh, mental health or people dealing with severe psychological disabilities? I guess like anything, one of you just don't you're, a lot of the people I'm sure are afraid of judgment, and I think that uh, in any in any case where you're talking whether you're talking about like problems. Um, psychologically or just like other problems in your life I think there's one aspect where you don't like kind of compelled not to show any weakness because then you're not strong and there's probably all sorts of mythology around why we think in those terms but yeah I could see the benefit of someone telling you like hey not only do I not mind that you are human but like I've made similar (laughs) mistakes I think that's Mm -hmm. probably that's probably key you know, we need to understand that they're suffering the, the, and that they're human just like us. The, the, the difference oftentimes between a service provider and, and a recipient of that service is, a, is a, an amount of suffering. Hopefully, the client has suffered more than the service provider and right. then the provider is in a good place to, to provide healing and, and has their own foundation of health to kind of come from. You know, but other than that, we're all human. You have to, you have to knock down that barrier. It comes from things as simple as, as dress and and how you look and 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 who you are and and the 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 training to let the person tell their story and to bring out their story, not have them fill in your blanks, but fill in their own blanks and leave a lot mm-hmm. of space for their unique culture and their own unique def- definition of healing to come out. Are there any like specifics that you can um, you can kind of convey related to like what stops someone from firstly seeking any sort of mental health services when they might benefit from them? And then maybe once they take the first step, actually being able to share like so- something specific enough to where um, a provider can actually use like that that information they need. Like in the example that you use when this the provider kind of needed real insights into what was going on in that person's life. And it takes, you know, some efforts or, or patience, or I'm sure a lot of different um, personality traits and like relationship management to make that work. So is there anything else specific that you feel like is common among people being willing to, to get into mental health treatment? Yeah. I mean, it starts with the provider needing to understand that journey towards health. But every day, the human spirit says, I can take this. And so you don't look to help, right? And you don't think you deserve help. There's a lot of mechanisms that keep these things in place. People who are suffering are really good at coping with that suffering. If they weren't, it would, it would be even worse, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's like a, it's actually almost a good thing that people don't ask for help because they're trying to cope. 
Um, right. So you have to in, you have to interrupt that suffering process early and say you're worthy of you're 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 worthy of things not being this hard. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be this hard. So you have to be in the community. You have to be in the schools. You have to be at the faith based centers to the places that people start talking about these things. So uh, uh, one example was on the same day I was supervising two different trainees. One of them was in our school-based program and they had just seen a kid who sadly had lost one of his parents. And the other parent uh, was in, in um, de denial of their grief. They were making the kid the, the man of the house. His childhood was kind of you know eroding away. And he wasn't in a mental illness, wasn't in a disorder, but things were going that way. And so we were on campus. Teacher noticed it, got us in there. We never actually talked to the kid. We were talking to the mom, helped the mom deal with her stuff. And then the kid became a kid again. Like he never ever talked to a therapist, right? Hmm. On the same day, that glorious story of interrupting that problem after that tragedy I drive back to our partial hospital program, which is for adults with serious mental illness, five days a week, five hours a day of, of services. And a different trainee told me about their new client. It was this kid basically, 20 years later, it's a different kid, but it's the same sure. exact story, I'm right? And there was nobody at, at his school. There was no one to realize that he had become, he had lost his childhood. He, he wasn't grieving, he was going through this process. And that led to a lifetime of, of suffering. So we had to kind of turn that, turn that, turn that around, tell him he mattered because he had been taking care of everyone else since that moment. And it took us a while, but he did find his way back to some level of um, happiness. But, you know, the first story is where we, where we want to be. We want to be out there. We want to find people before they even think to call us. That makes sense. I'm um, thinking about how you brought up access to books and really like stories. So as you're talking about access to stories and schools, mm -hmm. I can see how those things go hand in hand. And I thought that was kind of an interesting connection as you were saying that, that what it seems, that what we seem to be talking about is like access to shared experiences. So whether someone's like talking to you and telling you they have something in common with you, or they wrote it in a book or something like that, or whether it's- It's exciting when people see themselves mirrored and if I'm just sitting up here from a tower of not having experienced it and I say, well, I think you should do this because this is what I think about you. That's one thing. I, I had a client where I was saying, you should do this. You should do this. You should do this. He never did it, obviously. Mm -hmm. He then uh, a year later, as I'm working with him, brought in a workbook and said, look, I should do this. And I'm like, great. That's what I was thinking <laughs> before. <laughs> but that was his path to healing. You know, he needed to see himself there. And that was written by someone who'd experienced what he'd experienced. So of mm -hmm. course he's going to take that advice more, you know. Right. And if we can, if we can, can humanize that and get that word out there, that that's even better. Key challenges that often come up that we haven't really talked about. Other hobbies, other hmm. centers that people can become a part of. You know, you have to belong. You have to feel like you belong to something if you want to give up an old ins. In, 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 institution, right? You have to kind of transition to a different family system. I mean, this is why San Francisco um, gentrifying and people moving has been so dangerous in this way because long time in, institutions and cultures have kind of left and it's been mm. brought in with this very wealthy, young, transitory population. And so who's there to help you out on the street? You're just a stranger to them. You're not. Joe's brother, who you knew from childhood, now you're going to go help him. You're, you're, right. you're going to go feed your friend's son or something who's now left, right? You, that, that's not happening. So it, these types of, of um, in, institutions where people can go and be a part of something. Seems like there's a lot going on. Um, but yeah, thank you again for your time and hopefully we can do it again, again sometime soon. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. And thanks for giving voice to all, all these uh, topics. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for all your work. I really appreciate it.